us why you're doing this. Um, I think the declaration of the national state of emergency in terms of the Disaster Management Act um, was uh, fine at the start. And uh, if you look at the act, it's quite clear it's meant for urgent measures, uh, things that have to be done in a hurry. Um, and we have no problem with the measures that um, we are not fighting against the measures that have been taken. But it's uh, even if the Disaster Management Act is only focused on a very short and urgent period, um, we feel that the, the uh, Parliament has effectively uh, allowed itself to be uh, sidelined and has effectively abdicated its responsibility, its constitutional responsibility. Whilst the Disaster Management Act is good for a short while, Parliament should have gotten its act together and the executive should have uh, proposed legislation to deal with the current uh, um, situation. And uh, the application that we have um, lodged with the High Court effectively asks the court to declare that the uh, current state of affairs, now four months down the road, is not acceptable from a constitutional point of view and that Parliament has to uh, legislate the government's way forward. And it's not just the legislation which is important, but if Parliament does play a, uh, its constitutional role in this regard, it also means that uh, the issues will be raised in Parliament, a lot more exposure will be given to people who are busy with these things, and there will be a lot more transparency. All right, so you're saying in, in the media release that you sent out that um, the executive has basically abdicated um, authority to the National Coronavirus Command Council, but we know now that all government ministers are actually on that council. So why are you concerned about the executive part of it? Well, the, the executive needs to propose legislation to Parliament, and Parliament uh, would then consider it and pass whatever is necessary they feel fit needs to be passed. So, in that sense, the executive acts together with Parliament to legislate. Um, what has happened now is that the Minister of Cooperative Governance and uh, a number of other ministers are effectively running the the. Um, whole state's response to the coronavirus um, epidem uh, pandemic um, without any effective parliamentary oversight. There are some committees that are, um, um, parliamentary committees that are held now and then. They get ministerial briefings, but there's no effective oversight. And the uh, state of emergency can, if, can be um, extended on a monthly basis, uh, purely by an executive order. So the Minister of Cooperative Governance can extend this on a month-to-month -month, month -month basis for however long she likes with no parliamentary oversight. And we find that that is not acceptable. But we've all watched those rather uncomfortable Zoom parliamentary committee meetings where people mute each other angrily and there is discussion. There are those discussions, which is surely what Parliament does. So where are they failing in their duties? Well, they're failing in the very um, um, important duty, and that is their constitutional duty to legislate. Um, the Disaster Management Act is appropriate for something which comes on you suddenly, and it uh, allows you to make, or the government to make very quick, to um, uh, uh, take very quick measures uh, when it's confronted with a crisis. But it doesn't. It's not obvious from the context that it's not meant to go on forever. And we are now four months down the line after the declaration of the state of emergency. And the time has come for Parliament to play its constitutional role. What exactly must Parliament legislate? Because we see government gazettes coming out all the time with the new regulations. I presume you're talking about something different, but I don't understand exactly what they must be legislating. Well, the, the uh, coronavirus pandemic, it's a very specific pandemic. It's, uh, and the Disaster Management Act uh, is, is, uh, set out, is set out in very loose terms. Um, it's obvious from the context that it is not appropriate to deal with something of this nature. And Parliament needs to get together to adopt legislation with a specific focus on what has to be dealt with at the moment.
I see. So we've seen, um, you know, you're saying that it's clear that the Disaster Management Act was for a specific period of time. This has gone on for too long. But we also know there have been numerous court cases that have found the Disaster Management Act was actually correct. Um, so what are your chances of success here? Well, we, we are not, I think most of the other cases, or nearly all of the cases that have come before courts, have been uh, fighting against specific measures taken by government. We are not doing that. We are saying that we are, have, we are not um, uh, fighting against uh, any actions that have been taken by government, but we are saying that the time has now come for Parliament to play its constitutional role and to uh, do the necessary to adopt legislation to deal with this very specific threat that, is, uh, that we are facing. Now, you're going to court over this matter, but has there been any response from Parliament and what would you like to see them do? Well, Parliament has a very clear constitution, role in the Constitution um, and it needs to, to fulfil that role. Uh, it cannot just um, um, continue to sit on the sidelines and be briefed by ministers every now and then. Uh, this is not what the Constitution envisages. Didn't you take this matter to the Constitutional Court already? We, took, we uh, took it to the Constitutional Court. The Constitutional Court said that it's not appropriate for direct access to them. Uh, for that reason, we are going to the High Court. Um, the only issue there was the, the Constitutional Court felt it was not right to go directly to them. But uh, we are completely entitled to go to the High Court. And depending on how things work and if there are appeals, it might end up in the Constitutional Court anyway.